Puppies biting at hands is a real problem that's not only annoying, but it also hurts a lot as well. Today I'm going to talk to you about a whole bunch of things that people do that actually can provoke this problem from happening, and then of course what you need to do differently to stop it. I'm Kale McCann, this is Nine Week Gold Puppy Smooch. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. Now, let's talk about the first thing that I'm doing wrong. Number one, that entire intro that I just did, I was allowing him to gnaw on my hand. It was mostly to make sure you guys could see that we have a naughty little puppy here that we have to fix. But allowing him to chew on my hand for this long is not very good dog training. Dogs are within one second, so if I allow him to chew on my hand this long and then all of a sudden I tell him he's not supposed to do that anymore, and then you know the next day I let him chew again and then I tell him he's not supposed to do that anymore, it can be really, really confusing. So we're gonna talk about how to deal with our puppies with really good timing so that it makes sense. So, oops, so if he goes to bite me right away, I'm just gonna change positions here and I'm gonna prevent him from doing that. Now the second thing that I want to talk to you about is this line. Having a line on your puppy is also really helpful. If our puppies don't have a leash or a collar on and I have to grab the actual puppy and my hand has to go around his head, he's far more likely to bite at me. When I have a line on, I can control him. Now he's being a bit of a turkey right now, so I'm just going to actually pull him inside me and I'm going to do a little passive restraint just to get him to settle down. Settle. Good boy. I don't need to yell and scream at my puppy. Good boy. I'm going to hold him in a little bit more of a controlled way. That's better. That's a nicer baby. Good. Okay, I'm just going to stop him again here. What I want him to do is sort of be like a lip noodle in my hands. There. That's more noodly. Good boy. Now, read. Hi, lover. Reading your dog's body language is really important. Oh, we're going to try and bite the face, are we? Now, here's another thing we need to be careful of. Don't hold your puppy up near your face when you're trying to tell them that they're doing something wrong. Keep your posture up a little bit more. And in fact, I could even change my body language to be a little bit more in control. So I'm just gonna bring myself up a little bit more. He's not very limp in my hands. He's kind of looking for something to do. So I'm just gonna simply hold him. That's better. Do the noodle test. Good boy, you're so cute. You're so cute. Good boy, now I'm gonna put him down and I'm just gonna move this line so he doesn't go to bite at it. Good boy, I'm gonna place him down and see what he does. Ah, ah, ah. So right away, he bit at my knee in the line, so I'm gonna pick him up. Knock it off, that's enough. Settle. Good, again, timing. I didn't allow him to bite at my knee for you know a few seconds or a minute or so and then pick him up. I'm gonna stop him right away. Now I'm gonna put him down. So when you bite, all the fun stops. Good boy, that's better. Good, excellent, there, that's nice. So now he's choosing to pay attention to me. He's not biting. I have a couple treats ready and waiting in my pocket. Yes, good choice, moochie boochie boo. Yes, good boy, that's such a good man. Good for you. So again, reacting quickly when he makes a wrong behavior is so important. And it's not about yelling and screaming and making it a big deal, but it's about having a few little item in, in, items in place that allow me to have control. He has a collar on, he has a line on, I can easily get him. I'm not down on the floor in his face. I'm keeping myself up a little bit taller, immobilizing him when he's doing something I don't like. Good boy, yes. And then once I have him in a calmer state, I'm taking the opportunity to reward him uh, very um, generously as he uh, makes good choices. You're such a good boy. So the other thing that I was doing before that was actually provoking him to bite was how I was interacting with him with my hands. You know, if you expect your puppy not to bite at your hands, it's very important that you don't interact with your puppy in a way that provokes them. So if I want to pet him and snuggle him and love him, which I want to do all the time, I need to make sure that I'm touching him in sort of a calm, smoother way. Good boy. What a lot of people end up doing is they say, oh, what a good puppy. And they put their hands all over the puppy's face. Now look, as soon as I start to do that, I now have a bitey puppy again. As soon as I start to pet him in a vigorous way and I put my hands all over his face like this, I'm encouraging him to actually nip and bite at me and I don't wanna be doing that. So when I go to pet him and praise him, I'm just gonna hold him a little calmer. Good boy, and I'm gonna pet him more softly. Good boy, yes, good, that's better. Thanks, oh, I'm getting a bit of biting, so I'm gonna tell him, nope, that's enough, stop. Good boy. <laughs> oh my God, that face is a killer. Good man. Okay, so we're gonna lie down. We're gonna bite on the line. I don't really want him to do that. So I'm gonna lift him up again. That's enough. Settle. Stop. Good boy. 
Good, now I'm gonna pull the line away so this can't be a vicious circle there. Yay, excellent, we're laying calmly. Now I'm gonna go back and reward you. Are the superest puppy. Yes, you are a good boy. Good, I'm gonna try petting him again. Oops, oops, so I'm gonna put my food away. I'm gonna take a hold of him. <laughs> they will flip around like that, that's pretty common. They sort of turn into like, a, they do alligator rolls. That's better. Hi, good boy, now let's try that again. I'm gonna move my line out of the way here. I'm gonna place him down. Just settle, good boy, settle. Ah, ah, ah. Settle. Good boy. Yes, yeah, so I just used the line to immobilize him there a little bit. Again, look how fast I'm reacting to his behavior. That's what's making such a big difference. Now, I want to be able to pet him calmly like I was showing you before without him biting me. So I'm just going to hold the food away and I'm just going to pet him calmly. Yes, good boy. I'm going to put my hands on his face here. Yes, excellent. And again, I'm training him to understand that when human's hands come in, yes, you don't nip and bite. Yes, good boy. You get love and you get treats. Oh, you're making such good choices, yes. We wanna teach our puppies what we want them to do. We need to give them lots of positive reinforcement, but we also need to make sure that we're addressing things that we don't like as well. But at the same time, sometimes the way that we interact with our puppies actually cause them to make poor choices. And then we end up getting ourselves into these situations where our puppies are doing so much nipping and biting. But if we had just approached things a little bit differently, we could have avoided it all together. Good boy, good. Look what great choices he's making in just a matter of a few moments. Now, what happens if you're starting to to get a lot of success with your puppy not biting at your hands and their pu your puppy's making good choices around you but then your spouse comes home or you maybe have kids or you have friends come over and your puppy says well maybe I can bite at your hands instead you know what do you do now our goal and rule is that we we don't really want people who don't own your puppy or interact with your puppy on a, on a regular basis to ever be the ones to discipline your puppy that's your job our job is to teach our puppies how to behave well around other people the other rule that we have is we don't want children to do any type of discipline with the puppy. It can be very difficult for children to do it with proper timing and technique and sometimes it can actually teach the puppies that they're you know a little bit more of a litter mate rather than being respectful. So I want to walk you through what it looks like if your puppy happens to be biting at somebody else's hands and you're going to need to address that appropriately. So it's really common when friends or family members come over and uh, <laughs> they uh, want to say hello to the puppy that they often will interact with them and wait this way. So if I want to let them, oh, puppy, puppy yeah. there's a puppy. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're like always units. over the they're top the with units. the dog. Oh, they're hi. the cutest little thing in the world. Look at him. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's okay. nipping my so hands. He's he's biting his hands. He's he was biting on his wig there. Oh, and again, gosh. I don't really want oh, so my puppy being, oh, number one, I don't want gosh. somebody to interact with my puppy this way because it just provokes him. But I also don't want to sit here and just allow my puppy to learn that he can, you know, grab my friend's jeans and hands. He's really biting the hands now. So let's just walk through what we should do differently. So again, I have the line on. So next time he goes to bite, hey, mister, no way. I'm gonna take the line, good. Let's just get you under a little bit more control. Good boy, good settle, good. Okay, try and pet him again. Hi buddy, That's what's good. going on? Nope, settle, good. We'll go back to the same technique I was using before. Good boy, that's better, good. Okay, try and pet him again. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Okay, so as soon as you, I don't know if you could see there, but he flipped over and he didn't actually bite you, but he opened his mouth towards. So I'm just gonna stop him, that's enough. Good boy. Now, he's made three sort of bad choices. And, um, you know, he's not being horrible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help him to be a little bit more successful. So I'm gonna get some food up this time. Good boy, I'm gonna reward for calm puppy. And now I'm gonna have Ken pet him. Yes, oh. good boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, so oh, rather than good. allowing him to make a poor choice, I'm gonna help him make a better choice. Good, good boy. What if we go a little bit closer? Good boy, come on over here. Good, there, oh, yes, good. Yes, that was oh, nice. So good. that time he turned towards Ken's hand and he didn't nip. He just sort of checked him out that time. Yes, good boy. You could also, have your family members or your friends do feeding themselves. I'm gonna give Ken a couple treats. They're very, very tiny puppy treats. <laughs> Good, there we go. And so now we're conditioning the puppy. When somebody comes down on the floor to say hello to you, 
sit, be calm, and then pet him with the other hand, so he's just getting used to that too. There we go, yay, good. Excellent. So if we're trying to stop our puppies from nipping and biting at our hands and being crazy, we have to make sure that how we interact with our puppies isn't causing that to happen. Um, you know, and I tried to stop them a few times, but what you need to understand about a puppy is they're always going to do what they find most rewarding. So even though I stopped him, every time Ken went to say hello and there was no other uh, reason with the food being there, he went, okay, well, this is pretty fun. This is pretty fun. And the more I let that happen, the less likely I'm going to stop it, which is why we rerouted, went to more of the food direction. Now look at the great choices that he's making. Yes, good boy. Now in case you guys can't tell, it is actually me. But I think an important part <laughs> of this exercise yes. might be coaching your family, coaching yes. your friends on what they should do. And maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. We want to make sure that we are coaching our friends and family. You know, um, Ken obviously is playing a part of a very unsavvy dog person, which is not the case at With all. With awesome hair. <laughs> Uh, however, there's lots of times when, you know, we've had friends or family come over and puppies are so cute and the most common thing that people do is they go, oh my god, my cute little puppy, and that like high squeaky voice happens and then it just sends the puppy over the edge. We know that about people, so right away, we will coach people right away, you know, try not to pet the puppy, um, you know, if they're jumping like that, or here's some treats, I'm working on getting my puppy to sit. You wanna control the narrative a little bit so that your uh, friends and family have a better idea of how to interact with the puppy. There's been some times too, if um, we've had our puppies around kids, that I'll actually pick my puppy up and hold my puppy in my hands so that they're not down on the ground and being able to kind of run around and jump in and bite. I'll let them have like a pet or two and then and the puppy goes away. Um, and then the most important thing to remember is that so that your timing is not um, severely impacted by you trying to manage a bunch of people, manage your puppy. If you're not able to work through it in the moment and be able to actually address the biting at the hands the moment it happens, then you need to make sure you don't have that puppy in that scenario in the first place. So maybe puppy needs to be in the crate when you know people come in the house or there's a more exciting thing that happens so that I'm ready when it happens to be able to address it. Because circling back to the first point that I made is, you know, if I'm letting the puppy gnaw on my hands for a little while or jump on that person and then all of a sudden I say, okay, fine, that's enough. It's not clear to the dog. Puppies, dogs like things that are black and white, not things that are like a sometimes rule. They need an all the time rule because then they know how to change their behavior and do what you need them to do. Now, I want to show you guys a training exercise that uh, that you can do that's going to be a great one to start with anyways, just in your training, but it's also one that we really like that helps teaches your puppy to be a little bit more respectful around your hands, especially when you're holding food. And uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a couple treats. At, oh, ah, no, there we go. We started already. I went to have the food in my hand and I felt a little bit of teeth on my hand. Again, he's not biting me, drawing blood or anything drastic. He's just not being careful around his teeth, with his teeth around my hand. So I'm gonna offer my hand again. Yes, good boy. I felt uh, licking that time, I felt his teeth, but very gently. Uh -uh. Yes, good boy. So if I get a paw or if I get anything that I don't like, I'm simply gonna say ah, uh -uh, or you could even use a word like ouch, and you're gonna take the food away. If he's polite, I'm gonna let him have it. So I'm gonna offer it to him. Yes, good boy. And now when I'm holding the food, I'm gonna show you guys quickly here. I have the food in my hand and I'm covering it with my thumb so he can't get at it. And when I'm going to allow him to have it, I simply just lift my thumb and let him have the food. And rather than holding the treats between my fingers like this, which is something I would work towards, that's actually really good puppy, good boy. Um, this is actually more, see actually you're being so gentle, good boy, yes. This is actually a way harder way to feed your puppy initially by holding the treat like this because the puppy can get around your hands a lot more easily. Now he's doing great, obviously his mother has been practicing this a little bit, uh, but this is how I would suggest that you start. So again, I'm gonna cover my hand. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. Yes, good boy. I'm gonna be really nitpicky with him here. He's not biting me, he's just being a little bit rammy and rough and I want him to be a little calmer. You wait your turn, you like me. Yes, good boy, good boy. Yes, that was a better one, good man. Good, oops. Ah. 
Yes, that's better, good boy. So what I'm looking for here is that he approaches the situation a bit more calmly. Uh, this is a great way to have your family members do as well. You can have your kids do this too. Um, you know, I would practice with uh, adults a little bit. Make sure your puppy kind of has an understanding of the game before you let the kids practice. But this is a great way to teach your puppy to be a little bit more um, gentle and aware of how to use their teeth when they're taking something out of your hand. And again, it's not, I don't wait till the puppy's like actually biting me. I'm just looking for intention. I'm looking for the puppy to be a little calmer and um, more respectful around me when we have the food in the hand present. Now there's a lot of mistakes and people make when it comes to puppy biting. So if you want to check out a video that talks specifically about those things, make sure you check out that video right there. Now if you want to go from a puppy who's biting your hands to a puppy that's sleeping in your hands, make sure you check out the link in the description below to our Puppy Essentials online training program where you can work with one of our trainers. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Smooch. Happy training.